and the speed of light. Light travels at a speed of nearly 300 million meters per second. And to put that into perspective, it takes a little more than eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach the earth. But this doesn't explain what it is or why it's so fast, so let's compare the speed of light to the speed of sound, which we know a little bit more about its physics. Sound travels as waves, and it's due to the vibration of molecules and atoms. And so, for example, put a speaker in the middle of the room, and it will vibrate air molecules. And at different frequencies or wavelengths, let me pause that so you can see what some of those wavelengths might be, we hear different sounds. It might be a higher or lower pitch, depending on that frequency. But the speed is dependent on its medium. If you saw that, steel went really fast, water's already finished, and that bottom one, air molecules, are still bouncing back and forth. Steel is faster than air for the speed of sound. And it's dependent on its medium. Right? Steel is, is very dense compared to air, and so that's one of two properties that the speed, v, velocity, is based on the square root of two things. Numerator there is just a stiffness coefficient, and that can be measured different ways for different materials from gases to liquids to solids, but it's basically stiffness, and divided by, in the denominator, density. Now, Let's compare that equation to the speed of wave traveling in a string. Why a string? Because it's one dimensional, right? It's a line. Pluck a guitar string, for example, and it's going to be based on tension and also density, but now it's called linear density, right? Because it's one dimensional. So remember this equation that the speed of sound is, is very much related to the same thing here because it's related to stiffness and density. Are light waves traveling in a medium, known as the ether, or space-time to some? Now, to answer that question, well, let's look at other types of waves, like a water wave. Right? It's just the vibration of molecules, just like we saw with sound waves. And so you can actually see uh, one of those molecules is just vibrating back and forth, but you have the appearance of waves. And we're going to zoom in. As we all know, water is um, made of molecules, H2O two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. We're going to zoom in again. And now we're going to look at one of those atoms, the hydrogen atom, which is simply a proton and an electron. And this is not to scale. There's actually a crazy amount of space between that proton and electron in a real atom. But this happens between those two particles. Right? So they know where each other are, and, and they feel the force and might have an attraction or repulsion, for example. EM waves, electromagnetic waves. But all other waves that we know travel in a medium, so what do EM waves travel in, or gravitational waves? Is it really just empty space? Or is there a medium, an ether, and something that we just can't measure? And so to answer that question, let's look at EWT's explanation of particles. Now here we have that Proton and electron are described here as just waves, and a very special type of wave, a standing wave. And that's what EWT refers to as particles. And for more information, go to a link in the description. I'm not going to get into detail here about particles. And then the other types of waves are traveling waves. Right? Particles are stored energy, so we can measure them. Right? So if they have a gravitational force, for example, we can measure the mass. But all that other stuff, right, that electromagnetic wave that's going you know, through the ether has energy, right? but how do we detect that or measure it? So certainly can't weigh it. But for the next section though, we will have to come up with a definition of uh, ether mass, and I don't wanna have to come up with new terminology here, so I've simply just made it a capital KG instead of lowercase kg to represent particle mass. But an ether mass, inclusive of everything now, if we take a look at this blue border, we take volume, I'm sorry, what is everything in there? It's mass, particles, photons, everything we think of as empty space. Now an 
EWT, there is an ether mass calculation per volume. An ether density of 4 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms per meter cubed. Again, reminder of the use of the capital kg here. But either way, that's a very dense number. But is it right? Well, using three very different methods than what EWT used, we're going to arrive at the same value here. And you'll have to tell me, is this just a coincidence? And the first of three methods is going to use a hydrogen sphere. So let's use the same picture with a proton and electron from before, now in a sphere of something. If you take Planck mass and divide it by a spherical volume of hydrogen, you get that same number, 4 times 10 to the 22nd. Planck mass shows up in equations, but its meaning isn't known. So is this what Planck mass means? Now, by the way, the equations will appear in the bottom left, but I'm not going to show the math. Uh, refer to the paper that's linked in the description to see all derivations. The second method is going to use a particle, an electron sphere. And here's the picture again of an electron as standing waves to a radius known as its classical radius. If you take the magnetic constant and divide it by a modified electron sphere, guess what? You get the same number again, 4 times 10 to the 22nd. Modified electron sphere, because you'll see it as 4 thirds pi r squared in the denominator, not cubed. And that's because the magnetic constant has the other distance in its denominator as linear density. But if you follow the link to the what is charge video in the description, it will cover the units of the magnetic constant and when you apply that, you'll see it does resolve to units of density here, kilograms per meter cubed. The third method uh, will use photons, light waves. Right here is a picture of an electron with two photons because the electron is generally the one to produce photons as it changes energy levels in an atom. Now, math-wise, this one's a little bit more complex. It's the Planck constant, which shows up in photon equations. No, again, no surprise. Divide it by the same modified electron sphere as the previous one, but now two other constants, Planck charge squared and the speed of light. But again, you get the same number, 4 times 10 to the 22nd. Atoms, particles, photons, all with the same density value. Again, coincidence? For the last section, let's calculate the speed of light. To do so, we need to assume there is a medium, and we're going to use the equation for wave speed in one dimension, which is how photons, or light waves, travel. In the previous section, we calculated an ether density. Then the magnetic constant appeared in one of those equations as a linear density. So let's take the wave speed equation for a string from earlier, and let's put the magnetic constant in the denominator where the linear density was. This is not a surprise because the magnetic constant has been used in electromagnetic equations as the permeability of free space. But refer to the linked video to derive units into a linear density because that part is new. Next is tension. Now another property that has been used for years, the Coulomb constant, is used to determine the electric force between particles. It's another constant that needs the transition of units to resolve to become uh, a force, which attention is a force. And so refer again to the linked video. The Coulomb constant will go into the numerator with a 4 pi. Now note that James Maxwell used the electric constant instead of the Coulomb constant without needing the 4 pi, but they resolve to be the same thing. Or in fact, the electric constant is the inverse of 4 pi. Coulomb constant. But put it all together and what do you get? You get the calculation of the speed of light using the same equations for the speed of sound using a medium. And whereas the speed of sound is the vibration of atoms, the speed of light is the vibration of something in empty space. <laughs>